Good evening. This is uh, TradeSite's opening market commentary for U.S. stocks heading into the week beginning January 7th of 2013. This is going to be a regular once a week presentation. We're going to cover a little bit about the indices. Uh, Rich does his own separate report on the indices as well. You'll see that on here on YouTube. And then we're also going to kind of outline the U.S. data that will be coming out uh, during the week just so you know how to sort of roadmap yourself away from the key news. So let's start with the S&P 500 index. This is the cash index right here. You can see we've got a very nice breakout pattern setting up here. We had a nice one back in uh, September that broke out, but of course we were leading into both the election and the fiscal cliff and that one, even though you got a nice push up right here, that one certainly stalled out. Uh, got a little move down after uh, after that and then now we've got another base set up that's really nice here. Only thing to be aware of is we're going to be, this will be uh, bar 12 if I go to bar replay mode. It's bar 12 on the seeker tool right now. So. Again, unfortunately, bad timing for the seeker tool, which may give us a 13 sell signal right as the market's breaking out. We'll see which is more powerful, a four-month base or the seeker itself. But certainly from a pattern perspective, this looks very, very bullish for the market. Now, the only thing I would point out is the following. This looks like it's a big push up three days ago. In fact, it was a gap up, and the S&P index doesn't measure it properly. But let me show you what it looks like on the NDX instead so you have a better uh, feel for what's going on here. So you can see that we, we gapped up on the index. This is the NASDAQ index. And this one, um, you know, a little less bullish. Apple's been really weighing on this. It's a heavy stock in the index, uh, and it's holding the index back. So while the broad market looks good, the banks look good, some of the biotechs look good, it's, we're really seeing a problem here in the semis because of Apple, which is just lagging very hard. It was down to 15 points on Friday alone. It has so far held the 500 level. I'll pull it up in a minute. Uh, but it certainly has been struggling uh, in general. So uh, overall, what I see here is is a, a, you can see that the NASDAQ side is not nearly as strong as what you just saw in the S&P the last few days. And it's basically holding, this is almost a head and shoulders formation forming out uh, over the last uh, year or so. Let's hope that doesn't turn and crack down here into the 2500 level. A lot of that will have to do with where the spending talks go out of Washington uh, 60 days from now. But overall, we definitely are up here to start the year. We bottomed out in both the indices back in November. Um, this one had a little bigger push. This was a nice cup that broke out. Remember when the S&P broke out there in September? This one was also nice, but this one just hasn't quite formed up as well. So we're going to be looking at a lot of banks and biotechs if it's the ES versus the NQs or the S&P versus the uh, NASDAQ that's going to be moving here. Now there is also a rule. It's called the first three day of the year rule. Um, and basically here's how it works. If the market is up three days, the first three days of the year, and, and it doesn't mean that every single day has to be a big day, but if the trend is definitely up, uh, then what typically happens, and this is interesting when you realize that we've got that 13 sell signal forming on the S&P. Uh, if you get three days up to start the year, the rest of January is usually drifting or lo or lower to the downside. If you were to get three days down, it would be the upside. Now, again, remembering that we gap, I'll take you back. This is the Russell. You can see the Russell 2000, which are the small cap stocks, also strong here out of the gate. It doesn't show the gap properly either. We got a big gap up on uh, Wednesday, that big bar day. But even if you use this one or if you use the S&P, uh, you know, what you'll see here is that we've got three days up. That second day wasn't really much of a move. And so it's kind of questionable. It's right on the, on the cusp, I would say, uh, since the first day was such a gap and the second day was a little indecisive, but the third day was up. So it's a mixed bag. From a chart construction for, uh, perspective, I really like what I see here. It looks very bullish. We're at a good time of year. We're past at least most of the tax, some of the tax conversation, the hardcore part that people were worried about. Um, I think it was a good solution they came up with, and obviously the market liked it. So from that perspective, it's good, but just from some of these other things that we use, the technical tools of the seeker having a potential sell signal there, or the fact that we're three days up to start the year, which usually goes the other way after that, that's a little questionable. Let's just talk briefly about the data coming out this week so you can sort of roadmap. There is no economic data that matters on Monday. On Tuesday, we've got consumer credit in the afternoon. That's not a big deal. No data in the morning to worry about. On Wednesday, we've got the uh, mortgage index and crude oil inventories. Again, no big deal there. Thursday, a little bit of a deal with initial and continuing jobless claims and then wholesale inventories, but it's, it's not something that's going to rock the market typically. We're expecting 366 thousand initial jobless claims. That would be the consensus right now. And the big number for the week is trade balance. That's on Friday. $41.8 billion negative trade balance expected. 
we've also got import export prices then and then in the afternoon on Friday the Treasury budget number which doesn't matter that much so that's what we're looking at for the week the key number is going to be on Friday it's a very light week for news early on um, but we are in 2013 with the fiscal cliff behind us with volume being a little bit better the first three days of the year so far we hit one point uh, we hit two billion shares and then 1.7 the, the next two days so that's better as we'll discuss in our recap for the year uh, but I see some, I see some definitely some positive signs from a trading perspective, even though we had a, kind of a flat day on Friday. I like the construction of the market, uh, and we'll just see if, if we can do start, if we do start to get that breakout on the S and P. As long as that's heading up, these stocks are going to be ripping. So let's be prepared for that. If the secret gives us the 13 on the first day and stalls out the market, that's okay too. As long as we're trading volume better than last year, I'd be happy with that. Talk to you this week.